I just want to thank you for this night, Lord. I thank you for the presence that we feel already in this place, Lord. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you just come, Lord. Lord, you know our very heart. You know our needs already, Lord. Lord, I pray that you'll come, Lord, and just fill us, Lord, with your presence, Lord. Lord, that you will receive the strength that we need, Lord, and we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue to worship. Tradition wearing your name. I'm tired of a man made worship power. I'm tired, and I'm tired of. 
every song without praise Where worship seems so out of place I'm tired of our maladies You know I'm tired Oh 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah for that tonight, Holy Ghost. Lord, our hearts are hungry tonight for a touch of your power and of your presence. Lord, our hearts are ready tonight to receive that that you have for us. Lord, speak to us tonight, I pray, in this place, Lord. Lord, don't let us leave the same way we can. But Lord, let us have an encounter with your power and with your presence tonight. Help us tonight, I pray, Holy God of heaven. Hallelujah. la us tonight, Holy Ghost. We love you tonight. We love you tonight, Jesus. We love you tonight, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord.
Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah tonight, Lord, in your presence. God, we ask that your Spirit will continue to flow through our lives tonight. Lord, we give this service to you tonight, Lord, not our will, not our desire, Lord, not our program tonight, but we'll gladly get out of the way. Let the Holy Ghost from heaven touch us tonight, minister to people tonight, I pray. Lord, touch hearts and touch lives. God, we've been praying for a move of your Spirit. Lord, we've been setting time aside, asking for you to have your way. Lord, let tonight be that night. Let this service be that service. Rain upon us tonight, I pray, Spirit of God. Help us in all that we do tonight. Lord, I love you. Lift your hands toward heaven, church. Let's just worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords tonight. Thank you for who he is tonight, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord, I love you tonight. Just rain upon us in your house, I pray, Lord. Lord. No mind can know what God has in store. So open up heaven, open it wide. Over your church and over our lives. Holy Spirit, the Lord a hand clap of praise for that tonight. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Father, we reverence Your presence in our midst tonight. Father, we do not take it lightly or for granted. Father, we realize tonight that we have been invaded by the presence of the Holy Ghost. Father, Lord, I'm so thankful we didn't come for a social gathering tonight. Lord, we did not come for a gathering of like minds just to see what we could talk about, but we've come to give praise and honor and glory to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one who sits on the throne, the one, Lord, who has created heaven, the one who has prepared a place for us to go, the one, the one that I preached about this morning that I'm looking forward to seeing face to face in heaven. Lord, and I know heaven is real, and I'm thankful for that tonight. Father, I pray that your Spirit will just touch us in the remainder of this service. God, that you'll lead us, guide us. Lord, I want more of your presence, more of your power. Lord, this world has nothing to offer to me but things that leave me void and leave me empty. Lord, I don't want to make it on yesterday's experience. God, I want a fresh touch tonight. Lord, I don't want to make it on the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost that I felt this morning. God, I want a fresh anointing, a fresh touch, a fresh encounter with your Spirit tonight. Lord, I'll help me do what you've called us to do. Rain down upon us and touch every need tonight. God, move in this place, I pray. Lord, I will forever give you praise and honor and glory for it. In the name of Jesus, we ask tonight. And the church said, Amen. Amen. While the, spirit of, the atmosphere of prayer and spirit is here, I want to ask before you're seated tonight, can we just call upon the name of the Lord? I know there are those tonight that are sick. Sister Angela's out sick tonight. I ask that you remember Brother and Sister Maynard and remember Brother and Sister Summerall. God knows the needs. Brother Hardin said Sister Hardin was home in bed sick tonight. Just a lot of needs. But the same Spirit of God that I have felt rain down on my life already is able to touch them tonight. Amen. Would you stretch your hand toward heaven? Let's pray one more time. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the healing virtue of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for what it means to us. Thank you, Lord, for the prayers that have been answered, Lord, time and time again for healing in physical bodies. And, Lord, tonight, Lord, we call upon you, Lord, those that I've mentioned, others, God, that I've not mentioned, Lord, Sister Jan Hudson, Lord, be with her, Brother Clifton, Lord, Sister Sasser, God, Lord, Brother and Sister Maynard, God, Sister Harden, Lord, I know that you're able tonight. Be with Sister Angela, Lord, and Lord, be with Pastor Renfro and Peggy tonight, God, strengthen them, AJ and Ruby, Lord, and Lord, I know tonight that you're able, and I thank you for it, and pray that you'll just lead us and guide us in this place tonight. Lord, touch us as we find that will that you have for us, and we'll forever be grateful for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray tonight. And the church said amen and amen. Hallelujah. Choir, come on up. Let's sing unto the Lord tonight. the Lord tonight. Amen. And Brother Roger usually helps me with uh, choir as well, and him and Sister Jane are gone this weekend. So uh, Pastor Shelley was not here this morning. She was at Spirit Life, uh, but I, I volunteered her tonight. She said, I'll help you if you want me to. I said, you got it. Amen. So uh, she's going to help us tonight. 393 in that red back book. 393 simply says, when we all get to heaven. Amen. Uh, we was in the office this afternoon and talking about songs for tonight. And um, they were talking about heaven. I think somebody had referenced heaven. I preached about heaven this morning. I'm ready for heaven. Amen. 393. And then we'll sing 110. They'll have it for you up on the screen. Let's worship the Lord tonight.
Long as heaven's jubilee And oh, I will now Oh, that happy morning When we all shout and rise Oh, I glory It's hallelujah glory When we meet our blessed Savior In the skies And oh, I sing And oh, I Shall rise, oh, our glory is hallelujah when we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that tonight. Amen. Thank you, choir. Looking forward to that day. Well, when with all the heavenly hosts we begin to sing, we're singing in the Holy Ghost how the heavens will ring. Millions there will join the song. With them we shall be. We're praising Christ through ages, long as heaven's jubilee. And oh, our singing, and oh, our shouting on that happy 
morning when we all shall gladly rise. Oh, my glory is hallelujah when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky. Hallelujah. Looking forward to going to heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. No other place I'd rather be in the world than in church tonight. But there's no other place I'd rather be at all ever, and that is in heaven. Amen. Looking forward to going to heaven, seeing my Savior face to face. Amen. I was encouraged in the word of the Lord this morning. Amen. No more night, no more sickness, no more fear, no more pain, no more curse, no more nothing. It's going to be perfect. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Looking forward to going to heaven. Good to have you in church tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. I do remember brother and sister Renfro is there away this weekend and uh and uh, I miss him when he's not here. And um, I know uh, Pastor Kevin's home with Sophia. She's sick tonight. And Angela's sick. I mentioned some of those already. Uh, but we serve a God that heals. Amen. And I'm glad that you're here. Glad the Holy Ghost is here. Glad that um, I'm ready to see Jesus. Glad to know that my name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Don't forget this week, um, I think tomorrow night's a free night. Tuesday night's prayer meeting. There's no praise team practice this week. Uh, but there is prayer meeting at 7.30 Tuesday night. Wednesday night's church. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday morning, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday morning, will be Vacation Bible School all over again at the Spirit Life Campus. Uh, we uh, Kingdom Rocked it here Monday through Friday last week, and then uh, Wednesday, Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday morning, uh, they're going to King, Kingdom, Kingdom Rock it over there in Claremont. So uh, uh, if you uh, want to go out and support them, I advise you, encourage you to do that. I think some of some of our folks have already volunteered to go help them with, with stations next week. Uh, you should have seen uh, the trailer load of stuff that left here yesterday and uh, went all the way to uh, Claremont and to Ferndale Community, and uh, I'm looking forward to being with them. I plan to be there Thursday night for your opening night of Vacation Bible School, and uh, we're going to see just how much fun we can have over there. Amen. So don't forget about that. 7 o'clock, if I remember correctly, and uh, Thursday night, Friday night. I mean, they're going to have snacks. I mean, go show up for the free food. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and we'll get some Bible and some fun time and some crafts and all that in there. And uh, but 7 to 9, Thursday night, Friday night, and then Saturday morning from 10 to noon. Uh, they're going to have their closing event Saturday. It's a community outreach event, things of that nature. So make sure that you are over there if you can. If not, uh, if you can go one night, see Pastor Mike, Sister Shelley. Uh, they'll help you with whatever they can over there. Also, do want to remind you or tell you, I think I might have mentioned it this morning, if you want to hear, go, go hear Brother Hanks preach, he'll be in Linden Wednesday through Sunday. Is he preaching Saturday night? Do you know? I can't remember, okay? So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now, Wednesday night you need to be here because church night, but Thursday and Friday, uh, if you want to sneak over to Linden, uh, Brother Hanks will be there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. You can't be there Sunday. You've got to be here. But then Monday, uh, not tomorrow, but Monday week, uh, he starts camp meeting for us, and it's going to be focused specifically on biblical prophecy for that uh, Monday night through Friday night. And then Carl Thomas will be with us Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday day. So we're looking forward to a great time. I'm going to be at Spirit Life Thursday night. I'm going to try my best to be at Linden Church of God Friday night. And y'all pray for Pastor. My wife and kids are leaving tomorrow. Cherry's going to youth camp in North Florida. And Wendy's going to go see Mama. So if any of y'all want to take me out to eat or send me some money or make sure I'm okay, I, I could use it Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. And Friday night, because they won't be back until probably after midnight Friday night. And uh, so uh, we'll be here busy working around the church and doing things of that nature. At least a few of those days. I may sneak up there with them on Tuesday. I need to visit a school up there for uh, CJAX and, and uh, do an on-site visit to a school. So I'm going to try to do that. Uh, so it's a all-summer school. It's a, uh, a daycare, actually, is what it is. So I need to go visit them on Tuesday. And I may sneak over to church Tuesday night, check on my daughter, make sure she's behaving at youth camp, and then try to get back here Wednesday where I'll be ready to preach Wednesday night. So uh, uh, please um, call us. Rebecca will be in the office, and let's do what we can for the Lord. Amen. It's exciting to be a Christian. 
It's exciting to have an opportunity to share the gospel message with somebody else. Amen? And uh, so make sure you do that this week and uh, invite somebody to be with us, not only in Sunday worship, but also in camp meeting. I'm anticipating a great move of the Lord. I believe the, the orders have been troubled. I believe our hearts have been prepared. Pray, prayer changes things. Amen? When you put that time in prayer and you focus in prayer, I believe God will hear that prayer. And I'm excited about what God's going to do for us. We're going to change things up a little bit tonight. Uh, our schedule says one thing, but, uh, you know, Pastor, sometimes we, we make it say something else. Brother Tom's going to sing for us, and he's going to sing right now for us in just a second here. And then after that, we'll do something else. We've got a couple specials tonight. And uh, while he's getting ready, let me say it is good to have all of you in the house of the Lord tonight. It is good to see uh, Brother Wayman Thomas with us, no stranger to uh, the Church of God by any means, and has visited with us here at Okoe. We're delighted to have you back with us here in Okoe. Welcome, Brother Thomas, tonight. Amen. And good to see uh, that you are here. And uh, let's worship Brother Thomas. He ministers to us in song tonight. Something new this week, uh, watching this trial stuff where people say, Really? Do you believe that? Really? So I'm going to start using that a lot <laughs> when, I, uh, when I talk to people because I think it's really cute and funny. You know, for years people would, especially pastors, would get in the pulpit and say, you're going to change. There's going to be a change tonight. Who wants to change? Everybody raised their hands. And you know, after all these years of watching Christians, and many of you, my friends, who I love, I want to say, really? Do you really want to change? Because God is in the changing business. He's in the, the people business. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. So, if you can imagine yourself going out in the world tomorrow, doing whatever you normally do tomorrow, and people saying, you know, there's something different. Something has... What, it's, is it a power? Is it, it's, what, what is it about you that it, you are different? Are you ready for that tonight? Because I discovered something. Just This song is so short, I had to say a few words to go with it. That in the, at the end of the Gospel of John... Jesus asked Peter a dumb question. I say dumb because he asked it three times. Do you love me? And he made Peter, actually Simon, it wasn't Peter, he said, Simon, 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 do you love me? Yes, yes. And he, he made him say, I love you three times. Now, a lot of theologians say, oh, it's because he denied the Lord on the night of the crucifixion. No. Jesus was showing his best buddy something something even more powerful than walking on water, which he had taught him to do. He changed him from Simon back into Peter because he confessed his love to Jesus three times. So do you really want to change? Sing this song with me. I'm going to need the music. They're geniuses, all of them. We got it. We're all in the same key. We've never rehearsed it. The Holy Ghost has got to be in this song. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Was the best thing I've ever done. Do you believe it? Will you sing it with me? Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. 
was the best thing I've ever done. Okay, now I wrote this verse, got a lot of big words in it. In your arms I'm protected, and I never feel rejected. In your thoughts we're connected, and there's no place I'd rather be. Let's sing that one again. In your arms. In your arms I'm protected, and I'll never feel rejected. In your thoughts we're connected, and there's no place I'd rather be. Let's sing that first verse again. Everybody sing. Do you really want to change? <laughs> Thank you. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus Was the best thing I've ever done Tell him you love him tonight That's all we gotta do Falling in love with Jesus Falling in love with Jesus Falling in love with Jesus Was the best thing I've ever done Oh, falling in love With you again, Jesus Amen. Thank you. Amen. Aren't you glad you can fall in love with Jesus? And it does get better and better and better every day. Amen. Or it should. Hallelujah. Let me give that back to you. I don't need that. You don't want me singing tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to take just a moment and we're going to call a list of names. And I know there are some that are not here tonight. But uh, we're going to go ahead and proceed with this. And this is the list of EBS workers. Um, how many of you came by VBS at least one night this week and saw the setup and, and the campus? And uh, there's a lot of hard work. And we won't take time. And I'm going to move quickly through this. And if I call your name, would you just stand right where you're at? We'll hold our applause to the end and uh, ask the Lord uh, to help us get through all of this. Let's start uh, with those uh, that help with setup. Um, Ruby Porter, A.J. Porter, Sonia Draymond, Shelly Adams, Michael Adams, Caleb. Ryan, Zach, and Hannah. So if I've called your name, if you'll stand up. Also, I've got to add to that list Patrick, uh, Sister Ruby, and Brother AJ's son Patrick was here and helped us. And okay, let's talk about pictures. I mean, every night they did a uh, Monday through Thursday, a Spotlight VBS, where they embedded pictures into this program. Sister Jane took care of all of our pictures for the week. Our sound, Rebecca and Zach did, some, did our sound for this week. Our crew leaders, um, Hannah, Nika, Norman, Nicholas, Seymour, Christy, Ricky, my sister Faircloth and brother Faircloth, I'm sorry, Brendan DeLong, Donna DeLong, Brittany Posey, Lauren, Angelique, and Ryan. So if I've called your name, Stan. Uh, station leaders, uh, Tim, Fair, uh, brother Faircloth, Stan, uh, Melinda Thompson, Shannon, sister Katrina, Angela, Sonia again, Keith and Rob and Allie and Tegan and Samantha, all of those were in uh, station leaders. And let me see, I've got a few lists here to make sure I don't miss anybody. Cherith played Esther, I think it was, one night. And um, and if you're a student here uh, that, that attended VBS, why don't you stand? Let us appreciate and thank you as well. And then our fearless VBS leader, our Amplified Children's Pastor Director, Sister Leslie. Would you stand? Let us give all of these a round of an applause tonight. Amen. 
Sister Wendy and I just kind of got to roam around campus all week long, didn't have a job, and I don't know if I like having a job or not having a job. Amen? You can be seated, and we want to say thank you. And Sister Leslie has said, I think, thank you already to you, but we wanted to take time in this kind of a setting and uh, say it takes a lot of people uh, several, several days. Uh, the week before is a madhouse, but it takes more than just the week before. Uh, several days leading up to that week, then the week of, and then tear down on Saturday afterwards, and getting everything back ready for church. And so I thank you for your uh, commitment there, your dedication there, and uh, we're just anticipating that eternity. I, I don't know, I, I saw a, a mom, and I told this to Sister Leslie, uh, we had a student that was here this week, was with us on Thursday night, and the mom uh, later had made a comment, they live a little far away, and it takes them a little bit of gas to get here, but they came out and were with us on Thursday night, and, and uh, basically her statement was, social media post was, to know that her daughter rededicated her life to Jesus was worth whatever it costed. Amen? And uh, if that's one that we know of, but Thursday night's always the salvation night, and there were several students, my understanding that wanted to accept Jesus as their Savior. And so you never know what seed's been planted. Uh, some of those kids we did not know. Uh, they only came because of VBS, and, and uh, we've tried to do our best to contact. We'll contact them, try to stay up with them. Some come from other churches. We're aware of that. Uh, but you never know what our church or what influence we've had and what you've had uh, to help them know that they're ready to meet Jesus when that time comes. Amen? Amen. Ushers, would you come tonight? Prepare to wait upon the people, give you an opportunity to worship. Uh, with your tithes and with your offerings. Thank you for your faithfulness unto the Lord uh, in the area of stewardship with your tithes and your offerings. Remember our stewardship tip from this morning. I'm not tipping God. I tithe to the Lord, and then I give Him an offering above that. Amen. It's, I don't tip. I tithe. Can you say praise the Lord? And uh, that's what we do. Uh, that's what the Word says, the book says. And so be faithful in your tithes and your offerings tonight. Let us pray. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for the spirit we've been able to fill tonight, the atmosphere of worship. Lord, I know many that have been in VBS every night this week physically are tired, and I thank you, Lord, for the refreshing of your spirit that helps us in our natural, physical body. Pray that you'll bless this offering as we worship you with our giving, that you'll bless it for the intended use, multiply it to meet that need. Bless the giver today. God, and let them just see your hand at work in all that they do. In the name of Jesus, we pray, and everybody said amen. And amen. God bless you as you give tonight. Thank you for your giving tonight. I did mention VBS at Spirit Life Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. The Sunday's a very special day for them as well, and I know all of us can't be there. We have Somebody has to be in Okoy. Uh, but Sunday, Bishop Ivester will be with them as they celebrate 89 years of ministry. It is their homecoming month. And uh, so uh, we went back, and the official records, uh, there may be local records that are different, but the official record with the Church of God in Cleveland and in Tampa says they were organized in 1924. So that would make it 89 years this year. And uh, what, a, what a heritage there, amen? So uh, you pray for them Thursday, Friday, Saturday afternoon. They will 
uh, on Saturday, tear down all that VBS stuff and get it prettied up for the bishop who's supposed to be with them on Sunday morning for worship. And so we're so thankful for what God is doing over at the Spirit Life Campus. Sister Walcott's coming, going to minister to you in song tonight. While she is coming, let me uh, take time. This coming Friday, July the 19th, uh, Sister Wendy and I will celebrate 16 years of wedded bliss. And I want to uh, say happy anniversary to her. And uh, I don't know that we'll see each other at all Friday. Time they get back Friday night, it probably will be Saturday morning. Uh, but I do want to wish her a happy anniversary and thank her for her commitment to not only the marriage covenant but to ministry and uh, to be a wife and to be a mother and all those things that, you know, she has to do and put up with me. Amen. That's a lot. Now, I know that. And I do want to wish her a happy anniversary. God's blessed us for 16 wonderful years together. And I don't know what I would do without her. And I do want to say that before Friday gets here. Worship with Sister Wolcott as she ministers to you in song tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, I practiced a couple of songs <laughs> all week, but my voice going in and out. So uh, when I was coming, my husband told me to sing one, but I can't manage it because if I go up, I lost it. So the Holy Spirit gave me a song. I had this song since 38 years ago in Sunday school. I don't remember all the words, but I'm going to try to sing it tonight. But first, I want to give God, honor to God, who is the head of my life, to my partner that he has given me 30 years, but married for 23 years today. Wow. And to my extended family, greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. I have heard of a city in the Bible. It's the city that John saw coming down. It's the new Jerusalem. Where I'll be spent my long eternity. All the new Jerusalem. I'll be singing and rejoicing every day. I believe I will see King Jesus, the one who died to make a way for me. He is Alpha and Omega in the city. That one. That John saw coming down. I believe I will see King Jesus, the one who died to make a way for me, for a new Jerusalem. I'll be singing and rejoicing every day. I believe I will see King Jesus, the one who died to make a way for me. Amen. I'm looking forward to seeing Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to share something with you that will occur next weekend and ask that you be in much prayer about it while uh, Cherith is getting ready to minister to you in song just before I preach tonight. Uh, next 
Sunday, next weekend, uh, Tim and Leslie will be making a road trip, and uh, they will be traveling to Boswell, Pennsylvania. Now, why in the world would anybody want to go to Pennsylvania? I have no idea, except uh, they have an opportunity next weekend to preach there at Boswell, Pennsylvania. Uh, that church is looking for a pastor, and uh, their name has come up on the list. And so uh, we don't know what God's going to do. have no idea. It'd have to be God to move me to Pennsylvania. It gets cold up there, and uh, I think they have snow, and it's a long way from Mama's house. I couldn't get there in an hour or two, and so uh, I don't know. I'm just going to pray, Lord, have your way. I don't know how else to pray. Amen? Uh, but we know that this stuff happens when you put yourself out there and say, God, I'll do whatever you want to do. I, I, I told them a story um, back in 2007. Now, some of you were here then. You remember when we went over to Grace Street and preached over there that weekend, didn't know what God was doing, and we didn't get Grace Street. We ended up staying here at Okoye and left and came back to Okoye, and I knew that was God's plan. But I remember the nerves and the anxiety and the unknown, and God, what are you doing? So I'm going to be praying for them this week, and um, because they are on leadership uh, staff and they do have positions and did not want you to hear that in a negative tone, uh, my office is fully aware of it, and uh, their overseer has, uh, there in Pennsylvania, has a, um, a scheduled an appointment for them next Sunday, and so uh, they're going to get up there and get back. Cause we got camp meeting Monday night. I mean, you can't go preach all day Sunday and then lay out a camp meeting. That that's just unacceptable. And uh, if you do, I'm going to pray a different way. Amen. And uh, but we're looking forward to seeing them back on Monday, if not Monday, Tuesday. And uh, with travel time, but uh, I want them to stand right where they're at, and I'm going to ask you just to stretch your hand that way, and ask God just to direct them. That this is a big move, possibly. If God wants them in Pennsylvania, I'm going to tell you right now, I want them in Pennsylvania because if they're supposed to be there and not here, they'll cause problems for us. Amen. But if God don't want them in Pennsylvania, I don't want them there because uh, they can't just load the truck, come home the next day. Uh, they got to do what God's called them to do. And you know their children's with them. And would you just stretch your hand this way and ask God to be with them. Father, we put them again in your hands tonight. Pray that you'll guide and direct them. Lord, I don't know if this is the answer. God, I'm not you. But Lord, I believe if we'll follow after you, you'll show us the path to go. Lord, if this is the path you have for them, make it plain, make it clear, make it very precise. And let them know without a doubt. God, if this is not the plan you have for them, I pray you'll close the door and close it hard. Lord, that you will stop it. God, that it won't even happen. Lord, for there's no worse place to be than out of the will of God, just as there's no better place to be than in the will of God. Lord, and we pray that you'll guide and direct this family through this process. God, thank you for all that you've done for them. Lord, just grow them and mature them and let them, Lord, be all that you've asked them to be and called them to be. Lord, and let them do ministry, God, where Wherever you place them as your perfect will and your perfect plan. God, and we'll hold them up in prayer this week and next weekend, asking God that you'll be with them in a mighty way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. And Amen. Worship with Sister Cherith as she sings, and after that, I'm going to preach. Amen. Help us today.
God to tell you, Satan, you can't cross the bloodline because I'm covered by his blood. You may stare and you may fight, but you're going to lose this battle tonight. So remember, you can't cross the bloodline. can hardly go, but still I sing victory. Sometimes I'm walking by faith, and I can't see what lies before me, but still I sing victory. I've just got to tell you, Satan, you can't cross the bloodline, because I'm covered by his blood. cross the bloodline. Sometimes the battle gets hot and it seems we're fighting a lot, but I remember Jesus is a rock. So Satan, if I were you, I'd turn around and give up too, cause you know you're going to lose. I've just got to tell you, Satan, can't cross the bloodline because I'm covered by his blood. You may stare, you may fight, but we're gonna lose this battle tonight. So remember, you can't cross the bloodline. I've just got to tell you, Satan, you can't cross the bloodline because I'm covered by his You may stare, you may fight, you're gonna lose this battle tonight, so remember, you can't cross the bloodline. Amen. Hallelujah. Stand with me for the reading of God's Word, if you will. While you're doing that, let me remind you, if you don't have your I Love My Church t-shirts, uh, they should have them in the foyer after service tonight. Grab those. And then after we get done in the altar tonight, it is Journey Fellowship Night. So we would love to see you at the Firehouse Subs in Ocoee uh, for a time of uh, fellowship around the sub table. And so as soon as we finish here, we'll be gathering there. We'd love to have you come and be with us. It is Dutch. You have to pay for your own self. Um, if you don't have money, borrow it from Sister Wendy. Amen? And uh, let's have a good turnout tonight as we fellowship. We didn't do it last month. Pastor canceled a lot of stuff for prayer last month. But we're going to slide it back in this month. So uh, let's have a good turnout for that after church tonight. Second Peter chapter number 1. Uh, verses 1 through 9, while you're finding Second Peter. Yeah, I mentioned Brother Wayman Thomas earlier. It's also good to have Desiree in service with us. And uh, it's been a several weeks since she's been here. I told her, I, I told Justin I was getting a complex. She's been here a time or two before, but she's never been here when Pastor preached. And I don't know if she was avoiding me or what she was doing, but baby, she's here tonight. She better buckle her seatbelt. I'm going to preach. No, it is good to have her. We've uh, spent some time with her. And uh, so excited about what God's doing in her and Justin's lives. So remember them in prayer. Second Peter chapter number 1. Uh, we're going to start with 1 and let me just read it all the way through um, uh, to the end there. And I can do that if I push the right buttons on this thing in front of me and uh, get it ready. Go ahead and put it up for me. I'll read off the screen. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and, our, and of Jesus our Lord. According to His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue. 
whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving where we're going tonight, besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren, nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Are you glad you've been purged from the old ways tonight? Let us not forget what God has done for us. Let us pray. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for the Word of God that's real. Lord, I thank you for your touch of my physical body. Lord, you know this afternoon, Lord, I just felt I felt ill. I felt sick. Lord, I I felt just wore out. Well, Lord, I felt your presence touch me tonight, and I pray now that you'll anoint me. Lord, allow me to deliver that that is before us. Allow us, Lord, not to forget what you've done for us, but let us add those things to our life that are pleasing to you. Help us in this place tonight, and we'll forever give you praise and honor and glory for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. And amen. You may be seated in His presence tonight. Going to continue on this thought that we have in the book of Second Peter. And I'm going to, going to uh, title or label this one, if you will, Don't Stop Now. Look at your neighbor and say, Don't Stop Now. Amen. We're almost to heaven. Can you say amen? We're almost, I believe we're closer than we've ever been before. Pastor, of course we are. We're another day. No, I mean, the signs of the time tell me that we're living in the last of the last days and we're closer than we've ever been before and we need not stop doing what God has called us to do. Now, I don't have time to give you all the history that we preached on, but let me run through it briefly. I didn't even put it on the screen, I don't think because I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. I want to get to these new verses tonight. But let me remind you in case you're just joining us in this Second Peter series the very first time tonight. We realize that we have the same faith the apostles had. We realize that grace and peace have been multiplied in our life. That happens because of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We realize that we have everything that we need that pertains unto life and to godliness. And we have the capacity to live a vibrant and victorious life. Are you thankful for that? And we have many great precious promises and we talked about some of them last week I believe it was. Salvation by the blood of Jesus, sanctification, the Holy Ghost baptism and healing for our bodies and that list just goes on and on and on. And then Peter says that we have been made partakers of the divine nature having escaped corruption that is in the world through lust. And last week we preached about this, the corruption of the world and the pollution of the world and we realize that corruption was internal and pollution is external and I won't re-preach all of that tonight but we realize that if we're going to escape the corruption in the world we're going to have to also realize that our lives need to be different than what they've ever been when we were saved we were called to be a brand new creature in Jesus Christ can you say amen so that's kind of where we're at. I mean, that's where Peter brings us. And we talked about that. We preached about that. And, and I'm just thankful tonight that God is with us. And I'm thankful tonight to, that when I don't know what's going on with my device, it's still okay. Can you say praise the Lord? Some of you will get that later. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What are you doing, Pastor? I'm praying this thing catches up with me because I've, I've, I've left it already. Hallelujah. 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 Y'all getting it now? I'm serious. I'm serious. I've killed it right here on the stage. Amen. Hallelujah. First time and there we go. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Going to almost get spiritual right here on the platform. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hate the devil. Amen. 
You blame the devil for that? Go and blame somebody for it. Amen. Hallelujah. That corruption is internal. That pollution is external. And if we're going to escape the corruption that is in the world, we're going to have to have the divine nature of Jesus Christ in our lives. See, it was worth waiting for. Amen. And if you had the divine nature, you're not going to allow the things in the world to pollute you. Can you say amen? Now, I can give you a laundry list of things that pollute us. I won't. I'll just say, ask yourself this question. If Jesus was with you in form and body and was walking beside you every step of the day, would you do the things that you do today? Would you say the things that you say today? Amen? Would you think the things that you think because He knows your thoughts anyhow? Would you watch the things that you watch? Would you listen to the things that you listen to? Would you say and wear the the, the things that you say and where would you be the person you are right now or would you be different can I remind you that just because Jesus doesn't walk side by side with you he knows the very intent of your heart and we need to make sure that we put on the divine nature of Jesus can you say amen and finally in verse 5 Look at this tonight. He says, and besides this, or because of this, and we've got to realize that, that Peter is building on something. Because of what God has done for us, we need to do what? We need to give all diligence. I'm telling you, church, Christ has done some phenomenal things for us. He has allowed us, first of all, to be forgiven of our sin. Amen. Do you realize nobody else in the world can do that? Do you realize it takes the blood of Jesus to do that? Do you realize that it doesn't matter how good you think you have been if you've not been saved by the blood of the Lamb, you're still on your way to hell? And, 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 and that's what Peter's reminding those Gentiles. And because of all that God's done, we need to give Him all of, of our diligence. Now Barnes says it this way, we ought to give all diligence that we may, that we may make good use of the advantages the advantages of Christ and secure as high attainments as we possibly can. We should add one virtue to another that we may reach the highest possible elevation in holiness. Can I tell you, I don't want to see if I can just make it in, but I want to be so wrapped up in the love of Jesus and full of His power and His Spirit that I don't just make it in, but I add virtue upon virtue and blessing upon blessing and and, and attribute upon attribute and my life is not what I want it to be but it's what God has called me to be. We live in a world where people want to just barely get by. I don't think we have to just barely get by. We are victorious because of Jesus. Can you say amen? The truth is God doesn't want us to stop where we are. But He wants us to keep adding things to our life, to keep adding that we might obtain holiness, to keep adding that we might be ready for heaven when Jesus comes. And Peter says that we are to give all diligence to doing it. We must realize that that word diligence or that phrase, all diligence, means to do it heartily, to do it with zeal, to do it with effort. I don't want to be a part of nobody that's got this attitude, well, I'll just do what I can to get by. No! Jesus gave His life for you. Jesus died on Calvary for you. The least we can do is be excited about being a Christian and be excited about worshiping the Lord and be excited about having all those virtues added to our life. So I've come by tonight to tell you, don't stop now. Amen. Amen. Today in most churches, a lot of churches, most churches, Preachers are, if we're not careful, we'll, we'll, act, we'll, we'll think that being a Christian is an extracurricular activity. No, it's not. Being a Christian is serious business. We are an ambassador for Jesus Christ. We have been called out. We have been set apart. It is the most serious thing in life that we do. Well, Pastor, you know, I don't know about that now. I have a very important job and my family's important and everything that I'm involved in, it is important. But I will tell you that it pales in comparison to the relationship that you have with Jesus Christ. He should be first and foremost in everything that you do. Can you say amen? 
Amen. We don't need to be Sunday morning Christians. We don't need to be, be Christians that take it on as an extracurricular activity. We need to realize that the new birth that we have experienced is not the end, but the new birth is only the beginning. Can you say amen? That is where life begins. And that life brings us to growth. And Peter is saying it is time for us to don't stop, but to keep growing, to keep finding what God has called us to do. Because if you don't grow, you'll be stunted. Come on, now stay with me. Come on. You know that there are times in physical growth that that growth can be stunted. Right. It, it could be because of the environment. It could be because of lack of, of nutrition or malnutrition. It could be several things. And, and, but if you'll allow me tonight, I'm going to use that, 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 that thought of maybe a malnutrition event where maybe you don't have the resources and probably not in America as, as much as we see in third world countries. But, but the, 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 those children that are stunted, their growth is affected because uh, they don't get three meals a day and they throw away half of it. Can you say amen? We want it, we just go through the drive through right. If we don't have cash, we hand on plastic. Swipe that baby. And we eat what we want of it, throw the rest of it away. Mm. Come on. And when we get hungry again in two hours or three hours, we'll go find something else to eat. Amen? All right. But if you allow me to use that physical growth pattern for a while, what about those places where they don't have the ability to eat three or four times a day or five times a day? I think my son's eating six times a day, it seems. <laughs> Growing. He's going to be bigger than his daddy. I'm perfectly fine with that. Amen? He's going to be more of a man than I ever will be. <laughs> well, there's places where their, their growth is stunted. Do you know the same concept, and I've allowed that to settle in your spirit, and you understand that? The same concept of a physical growth that's stunted can also be paralleled over to the spiritual side. If you don't eat right physically, you won't grow right. If you don't eat right spiritually, you won't grow right. It is true in both realms, the physical realm and the spiritual realm. We won't grow up if we don't do what God has called us to do and partake of what God has called us to partake. That's why we have folks in the church that have never grown up. Pastor, I've been here 40 years. I didn't say how long you've attended the church. Maybe 50 years or 60 years. But never grown up. They don't eat right. And we're spiritually stunned. Our growth has been affected. Peter is telling us that we should never let that happen to us. We grow by adding these things, by making additions to our life. And Peter goes through a laundry list of what those are. And I'll move quick tonight. Why? Because I'm ready to go eat. Amen? Number one, we're going to add to our faith virtue. 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 Picture yourself getting dressed. In the morning, I have a routine. Don't get in my way. It just causes me to be out of whack when you do. There's a methodical process of getting dressed. I put on the same shoe, the, the, the same foot, every time first. It's just the way I am. Uh, my belt goes on a certain way. I'm building somewhere. Stay with me. But think about getting dressed. Now, some of you probably just mix it all up. That's why you might leave with two different socks on, or you might leave with... I've seen some folks leave with two different shoes on and be in them all day long and not realize it till that evening. I'm not sure how that happens, but I guess it does. But think about getting dressed. Some of you are guilty, aren't you? Picture yourself getting dressed. You put on first those, those undergarments. Those undergarments. That undergarment is called faith. You've got to have faith. I've preached on faith. I've tried to help you get the doubt out of your life. I've tried to help you know how to get your prayer. I mean, I, I've done my very best as your servant, as your shepherd and servant of the Lord to help you understand you've got to have faith. Faith is the basis of everything. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. So I'm not saying in, a, in, in place of faith, and, and the writer is not telling us in place of faith, but he's saying to add to it. So we're going to realize we don't even go outside if we don't put on some underclothes, or I hope we don't anyhow, okay? But then when you get those underclothes on, that faith, that concept, uh, you probably shouldn't go outside with just those on either. 
And I know in society we live in today, people go out and all kind of, there's things I see people in that I wouldn't want to be see dead in. Okay, but I'm, I'm assuming we're more, we're more, we're more spiritual and we're more uh, mature than that. And we understand that after you put on the undergarments, you're going to put on something else. Well, faith is that basis. And after we've added that faith, we're going to add some more clothes before we realize that we are presentable to do whatever God says for us to do. And Peter says that next layer that you add is going to be virtue. Now, the word virtue here means excellence. It means moral and spiritual excellence. And as a Christian, you should be striving for excellence in your life. Your life as an individual, your life as a family, your moral life, your spiritual your life, you should be striving to be excellent in everything. Amen. Well, Pastor, I'm not perfect. I didn't say perfect. Having excellence, excellence in everything you do does not mean you're perfect. It means that you do what you do to the very best of your ability, saying this is for the Lord and I need to give it 120%. Can you say Amen. I told you I went home or I was praying. You might have picked up on it. I went home this afternoon after having a great time in the Lord this morning. and Wendy didn't have lunch quite ready. I was even confused on what lunch was. I remember her saying this and, and when I was called to the dinner table, what was in front of me was not what I thought we were having and I was just all mixed up. And I wasn't feeling well so I went and laid down after I got home before lunch was ready and I just I just died and I woke up and had some lunch, went back to bed, woke up with a terrible headache and, I, and Wendy says, I, I know what it is. Now I'm going to paraphrase because um, she might not say it quite this nicely. I just need to realize I'm almost 40 and I can't do everything that I used to do as much as I used to do it. Amen? She's my wife of 16 years. She can be a little more direct. And I said, God, if you don't help me tonight, I ain't going to make it. I said, Lord, I want to be my very best when I get to that pulpit. I, I want to deliver that that is before us. I want to do it with excellence. I'm, we and I, we may not be the biggest church in West Orange County, but we're going to do what we do to the best of our ability. We're going to try to, be, to, to have excellence in everything. Teachers, when you teach, it needs to be an excellent presentation of the gospel. When you do girls' clubs and boys' clubs and Wednesday night classes, you need to do it the very best that you can. Now, I know we say, well, we can't because of resources or, or finances or, or talents or whatever. You take what you have and you let God get involved with it and and you do it to the best of your ability. We should strive for excellence in every part of our life. Now that word excellence basically has two meanings. One, it is fulfilled. We have fulfilled the purpose for which we were intended. I have, I have done that that I have been called to do. And it also can be described as a way to describe the power of those that do heroic deeds. Can I tell you that if we're going to be a virtuous Christian, if we're going to be fulfilled, to do what God has called us to do. We're going to have to fulfill the purpose for which God has created us to do. And for some of us, we need to do some heroic things for Christ. Amen. Pastor, what do you mean by that? Well, let me say it this way. We need to realize that there is a hero inside of us that we need to let the world know exists. That means I have to have the boldness uh, to live a life that's right every single day. Uh, that way when I need to tell my friends about Jesus, uh, I can only say I'm doing this uh, because the Spirit of God uh, has drawn me to a time uh, of some boldness that I share with you uh, the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Uh, now if you've lived like the devil all week, uh, you won't be able to do that. Got to be some virtue. That faith, and then we add to that faith, virtue. We're trying to realize that Christ has called us into something. God has great plans for our life, but we must yield to the plan. Can you say amen? God is looking for someone who will yield to the plan that He has for their life, and He will use them in great ways. Now, you may recognize the name D.L. Moody. D.L. Moody, the famed evangelist, and heard someone preach one day who made this statement. It remains to be seen and what God will do with one man totally committed to Him. 
Think about that. It remains to be seen what God will do with one man totally committed to Him. Moody said in his heart, I will be that man. And if you know anything about Moody, you know that Moody shook two continents for God. We realize tonight that we need to fulfill the purpose that God has created us to do. But not only virtue, number two tonight, Peter says we need to add some knowledge. Some knowledge. The Greek word used here is that, 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 that phrase or that statement that means practical knowledge or discernment. Oh, do we need discernment in our time. If we've ever needed good old practical knowledge or discernment, my friends, we need it in 2013. Now, Mama said if it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, talks like a duck, it's probably a duck. And I'm going to tell you, we live in a society today when the name Christianity has been used so wide to cover so much. Yes. And some of it I don't think Jesus is even very close to. Right. And we need to have discernment. We need to have that knowledge. We need to know what's going on. Some folks, all they want to do is argue about things. And sometimes they only want to argue about Scriptures. Can I remind you, uh, Paul's advice to them would be 1 Timothy 1 and 4, Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith. That's what we're supposed to do. Don't let yourself get mixed up into all that stuff. The word literally means to be able to handle life successfully. It takes some good old practical knowledge to handle life in a successful way, but you can handle life that way if you'll simply ask God for knowledge. Amen. Since it's anniversary week, I remember when we got married, oh Lord Jesus. Young. We were young. I was. We were both young. I thought I was ready, man. I thought I was ready to get hitched up. Sheriff Titus and Mariah, I was 10 years too young, okay? I got married at 21. Y'all wait till y'all are 31, okay? I thought, man, you know how it is. You, you know all the answers. What you going to live on? Well, I got a little bit of a paycheck. But what about rent? And what about cars? And what about, oh, we're just going to live off love. You ain't going to live off love. You'll starve to death. You will. You will. I remember we got married on Saturday morning. We went to the panhandle for our honeymoon, went to church. We got married on Saturday morning. We was in church on Sunday morning. We were back home on Tuesday afternoon. I don't like being gone, but about three days, I'm ready to go to the house. And we went to Winn-Dixie. You remember that? And we bought groceries, if I remember correctly. Had to have food for that house. And, and we have been feeding ourselves ever since that 16 years ago. I look back and I thought, man, we've made some dumb, dumb, dumb decisions. Most of them were my fault. Cherith was born, and I was trying to keep up with the Joneses. Remember that? <laughs> She's honest. <laughs> and got ourselves deeper than we needed to be. You know what I mean, moms and dads. We can do it. We'll stretch a little bit more. No, it didn't end up well. It affected us for many, many years. What we need today is some knowledge. And, and, and if we're not kept in the church world, we'll say, well, God will see us through. We'll have to, yes, He will, but He expects you to make wise decisions. He expects you to have discernment. He expects you to have some, some knowledge about you. If you want knowledge, you must seek the Lord for it, and, 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 and He will give it to you. Listen, listen to this in Proverbs 2, 3, and 5. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seek her as silver, and search for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. I say, God, if I can teach our young people anything today, it is they need to have the knowledge of God. I mean, if that's God's plan for your life, to be at that job and to be at that church and to be in that college and to be with that individual, if that's God's plan, it, it, it will happen. Amen? But don't you try to get involved and don't you try to make it work. Don't you make decisions maybe like Pastor did and say, oh, we'll make it happen. I'm going to tell you, I wish I had the chance to go back and undo some things. We don't. But if I did, I would do some things differently simply because of the knowledge that I've obtained simply by 
say in Christ, I want you to be the Lord in everything that I do. Yes. Virtue, knowledge. Number three, temperance. Some will translate temperance as self-control. We are admonished through, uh, through all types of scriptures to, exhi to exhibit temperance or self-control. 1 Corinthians 9.25, Paul says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Here Paul is alluding to an athlete, one who is training maybe for a, a marathon or an Olympic type event. What does that athlete do? They discipline themselves. They, they use self-control in order to win. And, and we as Christians are supposed to do the same thing. We need to have control in our lives. We need to have control of those things around us. So we, we need to be able to say what we do and where we go and how we act and what we look at and what we partake in. We do it only after we have examined ourselves in the area of temperance or self-control. We need to be careful of what the, because of what the writer of Proverbs warns us when he says in Proverbs 25, he that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. If you cannot control yourself, you will live a dilapidated spiritual life. Come on, Pastor. Come on. Pastor, you don't understand. I'm, and I'm not picking on any teenagers in the building tonight, but just in case you've lived this way. I'm 17, 18, 13, 14, and I do what I want to when I want to and how I want to. You are going to live a very rough life. Amen. Because sometimes we got to get some self-control. Oh, it's not just 13, 14, 15, 16, 17-year-olds. There are some of us that are 27, 37, and 47, and we need to exhibit some self-control in our life. Come on. Amen? Don't fly off the handle. There's no reason for that. Get control of that temper. Come on, Don't fly off the handle. You're able to do more. God's able to help you do more than that. Amen? Amen. Temperance. Number four, patience. Oh, patience. You've heard this. I think I've even said it before. There was a man that was praying for patience. God, I need some patience, and I need it now. That's not the way you get patience. What is patience? It is the ability to endure difficult circumstances. Now, I didn't write this, but listen to this. This is good. Temperance, the one we just talked about, has to do with handling the pleasures of life, able to control what you're involved in, what you're not, what you're going through. Patience has to do with handling the difficulties of life. How are you going to proceed through that? How are you going to endure that difficult situation? So temperance deals with the pleasures of life. Patience deals with the difficulties of life. The person who gives into pleasures usually gives into the pressure and they end up going the wrong way. Can you say amen? Patience is not something that we have automatically. We have to learn how to be patient or we have to learn how to endure those difficult circumstances. Listen to what James says. My brethren, count it all joy. That would not be the word I would have used. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations and knowing this, the trying of your faith and work it patience. But let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That patience that you're adding, that virtue and that knowledge and that temperance, and then that patience that we're going to add is going to come to the trying of your faith. I don't like it no more than you do. But if I'm going to add it to my life as the book says that I need to, then I should expect trials to come. For without trials, we never could learn patience. But we, by faith, need to let our trials work for us and not against us. Can you say amen? We must realize that, 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 that God is at work in every single trial of our life. Yes. Pastor, you mean when the... The car don't crank on a Monday morning. God knew about it. God knew about it. Come on. You mean when you get up on Tuesday morning and all four tires have been removed from your vehicle, 
God knew about it. God knew it. It's a trial. It's, it's something you don't like to deal with. But you let that work work to help you be a better person and to be one that is patient. I mentioned to you that temperance is dealing with the pleasures of life and patience is dealing with the difficulties of life. And before I leave that concept, let me throw this one out at you. Long-suffering. What is long-suffering? Long-suffering has to do with handling the difficult people in life. So there's temperance to deal with the pleasures. There's patience to deal with the, the, the difficulties. And, and while we're there, we'll throw in long-suffering. What is long-suffering? Long-suffering is just to help us deal with the, the difficult people. We all have them. You could probably give me a list. But don't. Just ask God to help you deal with them in the way that is pleasing unto Him. Number five tonight, godliness. The word godliness means godlikeness. We are, very, very briefly, we are to live godly lives. We are God's representation or His ambassador in this world. And we need to act like He wants us to act. You know, when, when families are going through difficulties and things blow up, you know, it, it would be something right in the middle of that to go up to them, and I don't know that I ever could do this, but say, now is that what Jesus would do? When you're arguing with your spouse and you're arguing with your children and they're arguing back with you, and, and, and wouldn't it be nice to have somebody just pop up right then and say, now is that what Jesus would do? But can I tell you, if you're adding godliness to your life, if, if you're allowing that godlikeness to be evident in your life, nobody will have to ask you that question. You will think it before you speak. You will run that statement through your brain before it comes out of your mouth. And we will say, Lord, this is not what I wanted to say. What I wanted to say probably would get me in trouble. But God, I'm trying to have godliness in my life. I'm trying to allow things to be pleasing to you. It would do parents good tonight to add some godliness to their life. Amen? It it would do some students some good to add some godliness to their life. The godly man does what what's right all the time, even when it hurts. The world doesn't say that. The world says, I'm out for myself. Make it easy. We'll use a very easy analogy. If you lie one time, you have to lie again to cover the other lie up. And then lie again. And then just tell the truth and you ain't got to remember because it's all the truth. Amen? Peter said we need to add that godliness next tonight. I, I think there's two more. I'm going to hurry. Brotherly kindness. It is interesting to go through Scriptures and see how many times we are instructed to love our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Let me give you a few. John 13, 35, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have what? Love one to another. 1 Peter 1.22 Seeing that you have purified your souls and obeying the truth of the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Romans 12 and 10 Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another. And then Hebrews tells us in 13.1 Let brotherly love continue. The fact that we love one another is evidence that we have truly been born again. Now, I don't like church fights. God knows I don't like church fights. Thank God, I, to my knowledge, we haven't dealt with a church fight in a long time. Hallelujah. But I will tell you, there are some things that are not pretty when it comes to church. And I will tell you, just in recent days, I've had to deal with some things across my desk that have not been pretty. It's, it's just been downright ugly. And I remember talking to the bishop, not yesterday, but the Saturday before, and I made this statement to him. I said, aren't we supposed to all be Christians? Why can't we just get along? He said, Brother Odom, you would think that we'd want to. So what happened? I think it's right here. We have forgotten that we are supposed to have brotherly kindness one toward the other. I might not agree with everything you do, but I'm going to love you. Right. Amen? Amen. I might not like the music you pick. I might not like the clothes that you wear. The, the way you brush your hair, I may not care for it all. You might not like the way I brush mine either. I, you know, I really don't care. It's falling out anyhow. I know, y'all pick on me all the time. But that stuff's petty. You know, it's petty. I'm going to love you as best as I can and help to display the love that Jesus has for me. Right. That means when you hurt my feelings, I'm going to love you anyhow. Right. 
Amen? When, when you make decisions that I don't like and you talk bad about me and the family, I'm going to love you anyhow. It's going to hurt, but I'm going to love you. I'm going to do my best to do that. Why? Because I'm supposed to put on some brotherly kindness. Brotherly kindness. The fact that we love one another is that evidence. And then lastly tonight, we're going to add some charity. Some charity. Some charity. What is charity? Brotherly kindness is that Philadelphia love. It's that love that comes because of our likenesses. Because we are Christians, we love other Christians. Peter says we need to do one more thing, and that is we need to add charity. Now that word charity is a Greek word, agape. And it means we love each other in spite of the differences. Now I kind of bridge these together. It is the kind of love that God had for you. I guarantee you, you were different than He was. We all were. We were on our way to hell. He loved us in spite of ourselves. He loved us so much that He said, I will extend to them a way of salvation. They're not worthy of it. They can never work to earn it. I will give it to them freely. Peter concludes by making two powerful statements. Listen to what he says in verse 8. For if these things be in you, all those things that we've added, if they be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what he's basically saying is if these things are in you, you will be fruitful. But he doesn't stop. Look at verse number 9. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. If those things are not in us, you will be forgetful. I've seen folks that have forgotten what God's done for them. They have forgotten what a mess they were in before God saved them. They have forgotten what God has blessed them with. And because they failed to grow in grace, and because they have failed to add these things, these virtues to their life, they have not become the men and the women that God has called them to be. Can I encourage you tonight to let us ask God for these virtues. Let us ask Him to add them to our faith. And let us be the men and the women that God has called us to be. What are they? Virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly love, and charity. Let's add them to our life. Would you stand with me tonight? Father, I love digging into your word. I love it. Father, I love taking it apart to, to help understand more of what you're saying. God, I'm thankful for those that have went before me and helped us do that. The knowledge you've given them. Lord, I'm thankful for that tonight. Father, I pray tonight that I have... A, a, a challenged and focused our hearts and our lives on our individual life and the, the, the things that we need to work on. Father, while I'm all thankful for the shout and I'm thankful for the emotions, God, it's not always that. There are times in our life that You deal with us and You want us to grow and You want us to be fruitful. And God, sometimes that means we have to be very honest with ourselves. Father, and could it be tonight that I, along with several others in this, in this sanctuary, need to add some of these things back to our life. Could it be, God, that we have been slack in some areas? Could it be, God, that we have allowed, Lord, these things to go by the wayside and tonight You've brought us back to a point of remembrance? Father, I pray that You'll bless us in this altar tonight and let us seek hard after You and who You are. We'll forever be grateful for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen. amen. Sister Rachel's coming. I'm going to invite you tonight to come and just gather around these altars and spend some time in prayer and ask God to add these things to your faith tonight. Would you come? Let's join around the altars tonight. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you, Lord, for your touch in our bodies and in our service tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the ability we have, Lord, to get on our knees and to call upon you tonight. Thank you for it. Thank you for it, God. God, let us add these things to our life, Lord, virtue. God, knowledge and temperance, God. Patience and godliness, brotherly love and charity. God, let us add them to our life. Lord, let us add them to our life that will be all that you called us to be. 
Lord, from the oldest of, to the youngest in this place tonight, pray that you'll bless us. Lord, from the oldest to the youngest tonight, let us seek after you. Let us seek after you tonight, I pray. Let us seek after you.